I love Ethiopia. I love it when we get a washed Ethiopia. This week, we're in luck. My name is Steve Layton, and I travel the world finding amazing and delicious coffee for you to drink at home. Some make coffee difficult to understand and complicated, but here, it's my job to make it easy and fun and tell you what's in my mug. So we haven't had an Ethiopian for a while, and Ethiopia is hard. Ethiopia is hard because one, it's traceability, two, it's finding good lots. Ethiopia sells itself, so that always will get a premium just because it's a washed Ethiopian. But we're really trying our hardest to get more variety in our African and uh, Indonesia, Indian sections. So this is an attempt at this one. This is the first year of buying this coffee. Um, and we're really lucky because we also have a natural from the same producer. Um, and the reason we ended up going with this one was because both of them really stood out on the cupping table of classic examples of washed and natural Ethiopians. It comes from Tedes Roba. Um, and his family, he lives with his wife and he has 10 children um, on a very, very small farm uh, just to the north of Yurgachev town, near the northern tip of Lake Abaya. And when I say tiny, he has around about one hectare of land. Um, that hectare of land is around about 1,700 metres above sea level. Um, and with such a tiny harvest and such a good cup, I really would love to know what he's doing. Um, I'm actually planning on going out to Ethiopia later on this month and uh, definitely somebody I'm going to try and hit up and just see why this coffee was so distinctive to all the others. After not doing the snozza for a while, we do it twice in two weeks. So why did I want to put this one up for uh, snozza in the bowl? Well, this is because it's a classic Jörg, as I've said, and it has a classic Jörg smell. It just smells floral. It just smells like a big vase of flowers. And it's just amazing, like the, the aromatics. Yeah, Ethiopia's are unique. And that's because of the uh, unique varietal lines that they have there. Coffees that have been there wild for hundreds of years um, and have developed into different things to what we know. Um, and there's definitely something in the processing that just makes it that kind of florally sweet, black tea-like um, coffees. Smelling coffee makes me thirsty. So on In My Mug for the last 10 years, yes, it has been 10 years, we have talked about the ECX because the ECX was formed back in 2008. And in 2008, what they did was basically ruin the specialty market for the entire community by every single lot had to be sold to the ECX, which is the Ethiopian Commodity Exchange, and then would have every little bit of information stripped away from it, would be bulked into big lots, Coffees that came from Sidamo, if they tasted like a Yurgachev, would be named up Yurgachev. Coffee that tasted like a hurrah from Yurgachev would be put as a hurrah. It was just crazy. Um, and what they realised fairly quickly was that it really wasn't working for the specialty buyer. And probably the only growing sector of the specialty coffee community is the specialty sector. So they've been generally over the years introducing some reforms. Um, to des uh, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, that's gone. It's going to come back to me in a little while. But he's been massively in involved. Uh, Israel, Israel de Geffa. See, I knew it would come back. Um, Israel's been uh, involved at a government level introducing some reforms, which started in 2017. What's now happened is a window before a lot goes to auction is put up where the farmer can sell it to somebody else. And once the sale is agreed, it will still go to the ECX to be signed, but it will go to the buyer, which is an incredibly powerful step forward into keeping traceability and being able to uh, facilitate more direct trade relationships. Another development has been that uh, a number of places have started to do single farmer projects, which this coffee is from. And this allows a single farmer to be part of a project and be able to build a longer term relationship uh, and hopefully with it, the rewards that should come from those longer term relationships and the stability that that can provide to a producer, knowing that a coffee buyer is coming back year on year to buy it. So in the last six, seven minutes, all I've been thinking about while recording this is this part, is I love a classic Yurgachev. Classic Yurgachevs, as I said to you, they're lemon, they're black tea, they're delicious, they're floral. 
So you remember, remember last week I said that you had some warm Ribena. This week you've got Lemsip. Isn't that good? If you've got a little bit of a cold, this is going to clear you up like a treat because it just smells like Lemsip. Super big sweet lemon with black tea Earl Grey. Like it is just classic yoga chef. A little bit of florality on there as well. It's kind of just alive. It's delicate. Um, but like, wow, Lemsip. Really does taste like Lemsip. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this coffee. You deserve this coffee for getting to this point and watching me talk. Please join me again soon. But do remember, life is too short for bad coffee.